Hello everyone, today in this module we are going to talk about population demography. Demography is the study of size, structure and distribution of populations. It shows the temporal and spatial changes in a population in response to birth, migration, aging and death. The learning objectives of this module are introduction to demography, demographic parameters, survivorship curves and life tables. Demography is the study of population structure in relation to size, age, sex, natality, mortality, immigration, age structure and survivorship. Population dynamics can vary drastically depending on the age structure of the population, ratio of male and females, addition of offsprings through birth, deletion through death and so on. Demography is the study of the characteristics of population. It incorporates statistical measurement of how these characteristics change over time. It is a useful tool for ecologists, economists and sociologists. In ecology, it is applicable to all living beings being economists and sociologists make use of these studies only for human populations. Demography is the study of the vital stat statics of a population and how they change over time. It involves intensive study of both laboratory and natural populations with emphasis on causes of population fluctuations and effects of crowding on birth and death rates. Demographic parameters, age structure, age structures define ratio or population of individuals in a population following under different age groups. These age groups are pre-reproductive, reproductive, post-reproductive post with a corresponding can also be termed as young, adult and old. The age structure represents the population status and also helps in determining the future of the population. Age structure is usually illustrated by an age pyramid, a graph in which horizontal bars represent the percentage of the population in each age group. Each age group is called a cohort. The longer a bar is, the greater the poor portion of the individual in that age group. Age pyramids are useful for tracing the history of a population and for projecting future population trends. There are three forms of age structures according to the populations can be. Number one is the expanding. The expanding population show higher ratios of pre-reproductive group of individuals. More number of offsprings are produced than parents. It is a pyramid shaped. It generally is for found in lower organisms like algae, bacteria and so on. The second is the stable. The stable population on the other hand has almost same ratio to all the three age groups. Number of offsprings is just equal to the number of parents. The pyramid shown almost straight sides and is a bell shaped. The third is the diminishing. The ratio of pre-reproductive age group is minimum and the post-reproductive is maximum in diminishing population. Number of offsprings produced is less than parents. The base of pyramid is narrow and is urn shaped. The age structure also helps in judging the consequences of a typical type of population and if needed a strategy can be defined to take a remedial measure so that population does not decrease. In study of plant population demography, age structure has been included comparatively later. Determining age in plants is difficult. Plants show modular structure and asexual reproduction which is not dependent upon age. Uneven growth of same aged individuals also imposes difficulty. For example, trees of same age may not show exactly the same growth and at the same time, some may show same growth even if they are not of the same age. Measuring girth of the stems, counting growth rings or taking account of one cohort or and then following it strictly are some parameters by which the age structure in plant population 
is built up. Survivorship curves. Survivorship curves are graphical representation of a population growth form and they help in viewing the population future and status. The graph is plotted from the data of the lifespan and demarcating the different age groups at different times during this lifespan. The survivorship curve is drawn by taking into account the percentage of living individuals at every age or life stage. The number of survivors or density is plotted on vertical axis on a log scale. The survivorship curve helps in identifying the critical stage of the population or life cycle of the individuals at which mortality is high. In this figure, we can see the types of survivor curves with explanation. That is, first one, in type 1 survivorship, juvenile survival is high and most mortality occurs among older individuals. In contrast, talking about type 2 survivorship curve, individuals in a population with type 2 survivorship die at equal rates regardless of age. Next, in the individuals showing type 3 survivorship die at a high rate as juveniles and then at much lower rates later in life. Three types of graphs are obtained from different groups of plants and animals. Type 1, it indicates high mortality rate at old age. Most individuals of the population live their full life. For example, mammals, especially the human beings. Type 2, it indicates a steady mortality rate throughout the lifespan. For example, birds. And third, the type 3, it indicates high mortality in young phases. For example, the plants, insects and invertebrates. Life tables. Life tables are useful devices to analyze probability of survival of individuals in a population at particular ages or to determine most vulnerable age to mortality. They are tabular form of survivorship curves and are used to determine mean expectancy of life. Life table data can provide much insight into the demographics of a population. Quantifying age specific birth and death rates enables us to discern patterns and make predictions about the growth or decline of populations in future. Life table is an age specific summary of the survival pattern of the population. It was first developed for human populations specifically for life insurance companies. In ecology they were introduced by DV in 1947. Tables are prepared by taking into account different features of population like its age class and proportion of the organisms surviving at a later stage, dying at a stage, total lifespan, etc. The whole lifespan is divided into different segments and the number of individuals falling under these segments is termed as cohort. Life table built by determining number of individuals that die in each age group and calculating the proportion of the cohort surviving from one age to the next. Data for life tables hard to collect for wild populations. There are three types of life tables, the horizontal, vertical and dynamic composite. The first one that is the co horizontal cohort dynamic life tables. These are constructed by following a cohort of individuals where all are born in short span of time. They are mostly used for short living species where generations are discrete. Next is the vertical or time specific or static life tables. These are constructed by sampling the population and incorporating the data on individuals all ages at a single point of time. This is not a very adaptable type because observations are short term observations. Next is dynamic composite life table. This is constructed following the method of horizontal life table, but the cohort is formed by accumulation of data for successive years. The dynamic life table is considered as most appropriate type. 
This slide shows the diagrammatic illustration of dynamic versus static life table. Constructing life tables for plant populations is a difficult task. Determination of age is more difficult and it is difficult to identify separate individuals. While the parent plant may die, it also lives on through its propagule. Thus, demographers have to deal with mortality on two levels, one for the individual plant that is the genet and one for the clones that is the ramet. In case of plants, life table are helpful in studying population dynamics of plant modules such as leaves, buds and stems which show age specific mortality. It also helps in studying the role of a particular module in the population growth. Regeneration or degeneration of these units as well as their longevity influences the performance of an individual, its competence and its productivity remarkably. Life tables are important to be constructed especially when it is essential to estimate that how well a threatened or endangered species is doing. They can help in determining whether a population is able to maintain itself or whether individuals are dying and the species is going to extinct. To summarize this module, we can say that population demography is an important tool for ecologists, economists and sociologists. Population demography helps in characterizing and in studying the dynamics of a population. We can come to know when a population is going to extinct and then a government can take proper measures to conserve it. Thank you.